Hello, this is David Mandel once again, and um, this is my discussion of uh, the material in Chapter 2 and the lab that goes with Chapter 2. What we want you to do in uh, that lab is to actually install Linux on a machine and get going. Um, I will say sometimes that goes quick and easy and smooth and there are no problems. Once in a while there are problems and it goes anything but quick and easy and smooth. And um, should things go really bad, I basically have made the next lab so that uh, you could do that using just Nopix or some live distribution and actually not have to have um, uh, lab 2 done to do lab 3. Uh, however, you do need to get lab 2 done because most of the course depends on having a Linux machine and having it running. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, preliminaries to installing Linux. Um, there's a lot of decisions to be made. I'm going to go to my instructor notes here, which happen to be over here. And uh, these are basically, these are just talking points that I use as we talk. Okay, the big decision you have to make uh, in installing Linux is do you want to use real hardware? Do you want to, um, oh, what do you say, uh, repartition your hard drive and reformat your hard drive and go all the way to Linux? Or maybe you have a second machine sitting in a closet that you want to do that with. Or in my case, I used my second machine in the closet for Windows and um, um, or actually the third or fourth or fifth machine for Windows. All the others are Linux or FreeBSD or something like that. Um, and um, you can partition your hard drive and run both Windows and Linux off the same machine. Or what I do more often is actually to use a couple different hard drives. Okay. Um, the other alternative to that is to use some sort of virtualization software and use virtualized hardware. Um, and instead of using um, instead of using software, you um, and so what you'll have is a um, a computer that you can install Linux on but it will be a software computer, a virtual computer instead of a real one. Um, there's um, pluses and minuses to both approaches. I use both approaches. By the end of the term, I would hope that you would be able to use either approach and feel comfortable with both approaches. Uh, there's good reasons to use both approaches. I'm a little biased towards using real hardware, although I use virtualized machines e even in a production setting. So, um, however, the advantages of real hardware is um, you don't need so much hardware. It just takes a lot less hardware. I have installed Linux on machines as small as um, Oh boy, in uh, the early 1990s, I installed it on a machine, uh, a th one of those compact 386 16s, the first 386 out on the market. It was a 386 running at 16 megahertz with 5 megabytes of RAM and a 40, catch me now, 40 megabyte hard drive. Not gigabyte, megabyte. And um, I managed to install Linux. At that time, it was an alpha copy of Linux. They didn't really have a released copy. And uh, they said, this is broken. This won't run well. This is, you know. And it was marvelous. It ran. Um, it did the job I needed to do better than any commercial software I could buy at the time. It, it was it was cool. Um, and um, and I've been a Linux user ever since. Uh, that was probably 1993, I suppose, um, 94, something like that. Now, I'd say 93. Uh, in any case, what we have um, 
that is the, an advantage to using hardware. The other advantage to using hardware, uh, real bare bones hardware, is that you're closer to the hardware. And it's easier to get access, direct access to USB ports, direct access to your video cards, direct access to um, your, well, this this is, oh, well, your speakers. And, and you don't have to go through all the virtualization mess to get access to those. Uh, one of the weaknesses is you have direct access to all your hardware. And if a Linux driver doesn't exist for that piece of hardware, you're up a crick. And uh, sometimes, especially with wireless cards, uh, actually virtualized hardware is a lot easier than real hardware. Um, although I tend to think that the advantages tend to go towards using uh, bare bones uh, hardware, real hardware, rather than virtualized. Um, Virtualization does have a lot of advantages. Um, it does require a lot more hardware. I would not, well, I would not run a virtualized system unless you have a pretty modern system. I do run some virtualized systems. I run one on an older machine that I bought used in maybe 2002. It's a Pentium, um, has a Celeron processor, I think, one core. Um, I've raised the RAM to one gigabyte of RAM um, and um, almost a terabyte of hard drive, but that doesn't help me. Um, but it, it's really a, a slow limited machine and I can run one or two virtualized sessions on that as well as the main machine. Um, Usually what I do is I run a virtual Windows machine under my Linux machine on that machine. Um, I have another virtual virtualized machine that really is smaller. It's got uh, four cores. It, it's an old machine. It's a dual core Z or a dual Xeon machine. One of the earliest Xeon processors that Intel makes uh, made. Um, it's only got two gigs of RAM, maybe four gigs of RAM. I think two gigs of RAM, because that's all I could afford. It uses very expensive error, it's a server, uses very expensive error correcting RAM, and it's it's hard to get. It's slow, but it's hard to get. Um, and I usually run the main, oh, uh, the main, the core operating system, which is Linux, that I run on that machine. And then I usually run two virtual servers under that machine. And the two virtual servers I make available to the public. They're web servers. And um, um, and that's a production machine, and it runs just fine. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good machine. It's a production machine. Um, it should be replaced because you know, I could replace it for $500 with a much better machine, but uh, but I haven't. Um, the, the, one of the advantages of virtualization is since you can run um, um, more machines under your machine, um, that you can run more virtualized machines on one machine. It allows you to experiment with um, various distributions, have multiple OSs, try one thing. If you don't like it, try another one. Um, there, it's cheap and easy to try things. You can actually network them all together and uh, simulate network activities. So you can have, you know, um, a tin machine network running on this one little um, uh, old uh, computer, and uh, and it will work uh, slowly. But yes, it will work. Uh, virtualized machines they are a little slower, but with modern virtualization they're fast enough and good enough to be production machines. Uh, they isolate you a little more from the hardware, which, as I said, is, has advantages and disadvantages. 
Uh, when I'm doing exotic stuff, I really want to be very, very close to the hardware. I don't want to virtualize things. If all I'm doing is running a web server or uh, um, some sort of internet server where I'm not really dealing with exotic hardware, um, virtualized systems work pretty well. The other thing about them is if uh, the reason I virtualize things on that one production server I have is one of the machines I think probably has some security holes and I, I'm not sure about the security and so is, if a cracker gets in and destroys that system I'd rather they destroyed the one virtualized system than that they destroy everything I've got running on that server. So um, it's uh, a virtualization is an, can be an important component of uh, security. Okay, um, the virtualization that we use largely at Portland Community College is called VirtualBox. You can download that from virtualbox.org. I think there are several versions of VirtualBox on virtualbox.org. Of course, you'll want the version for whatever machine you're running, like a, a Windows machine or a Linux machine or, or a Solaris machine. Um, but I think there at least used to be both an open source version and um, an enhanced uh, non-open source version. The open source version is the only one I've ever used. It works great. I will say I have had a little trouble running VirtualBox on some Linux machines. It's got a, a mixed reputation there. Some people love it running on Linux. Some people um, uh, this means running the, where the actual machine is running Linux, not running Windows. And then you install VirtualBox on top of it. Um, my friends have had mixed results. Some of them love it and others prefer to run some other virtualization. I've also ran VirtualBox on Windows and uh, had real good experience with that. Um, um, personally, I tend to use VMware when I'm uh, uh, running, doing virtualization on um, on um, on Linux and VirtualBox when I do it on Windows. And then the machines you run under these, the virtual machines, they can be anything. Um, usually Linux or BSD, but well, I just told you I even run Windows under it, uh, Windows XP at least. Um, Alternatives to VirtualBox. There, are, uh, virtualization is a huge field right now. There are many alternatives to VirtualBox. Um, some of the better known uh, there. There's um, a system called chroot or other jails, especially BSD jails, which only work for the BSD operating systems, not for Linux. But um, uh, that's sort of an almost virtualization that is at the heart is at, at a level where it runs really fast. Um, we may talk about that sometime later in the class, or possibly you'll talk about that in the network class when you talk about uh, um, uh, the bind DNS. Um, but the more popular v um, uh, virtualizations that are used, there's just a whole slew of them. It, a few years ago, there wasn't one that worked decently. Now there's a whole slew of them. The most popular commercial one is VMware. Um, VirtualBox is now the second most popular, or maybe even the most popular, it's an open source one, is called Zen. Um, KVM is Linus's favorite virtualization um, system. Uh, VirtualBox is definitely good and it's in the pack of, of the top ones. Um, but I do think it's probably three or four or five down the list. Uh, there, whoops, time for a break here. I need a cup of coffee. See you later.